In a little village high in the mountains above Santa Fe, preparations for Las Posadas had been going on for weeks. Sister Angie was so proud. Her niece, Lupe, and Lupe's new husband, Roberto, had been chosen to portray Maria and Jose, Mary and Joseph. Sister Angie had been in charge of Las Posadas for years and years. It was she who trained the singers who followed Maria and Jose as they made their way around the plaza in old Santa Fe, and finally into the courtyard of the Palace of Governors, where an empty manger waited for the birth of the Holy Child. Now, Sister Angie said, speaking to the two men who would play the devils, here's a picture of what your faces are going to look like. She wanted to make sure they knew how to paint their faces red with black eyebrows and beards, and that their red satin costumes were just right, especially the red capes and head caps with pointy red horns. The devil would snarl and hiss as he tried to keep Maria and Jose from finding shelter. The plaza was so big that two devils were needed to rush from balcony to balcony without being seen by the crowd. Sister Angie always made the costumes for Maria and Jose herself. Blue and white for Maria, brown for Jose. Stand still, she told Roberto. Lupe, I hope he isn't as fidgety at home. Oh, no, Tia Angie. He's just nervous about being Jose. Ah, oh, well, Sister Angie said. Let's just go to the church and look at Maria and Jose. They will give you inspiration, Roberto. Miguel Ovideo, the santero maker, had made a beautiful carving of Maria and Jose for the Golden Jubilee of Sister Angie the year before. Fifty years as a sister. Father Vasquez had put the carving in a place of honor in the church. As Christmas drew near, it was moved near the altar rail. They stood looking up at Maria and Jose on their way to Bethlehem. Just think of the carving and try to look like them, Sister Angie told them. I will, promised Roberto. At least we don't have to worry about the burro. Las Posadas didn't have a burro in the procession. Maria and Jose walked. The burro had only made problems, so they had stopped using one years ago. Finally, it was the night of Las Posadas, and Sister Angie came down with the flu. There is no way you can go tonight, the doctor told her, walking in all that cold weather, and they say that the snow is coming. They will just have to get along without you this year. For the first time, Sister Angie would not be at Las Posadas. Don't worry, Tia, Lupe told her. We will make you proud this evening. In the streets leading to the plaza, men were busy putting the farolitas in place. They would be lit as soon as it got dark. Wood for the bonfire was stacked in the courtyard just off the plaza, ready to be set ablaze when Maria and Jose entered. Well, one of the men said, it looks as if it will be a white Christmas. Snow is on the way. Even as he spoke, flakes drifted down. Eh, but a little snow never stops, Laps Posadas. Up in the village, the singers, the candle bearers, and the devils piled into their cars. They wanted to get down the mountain before the snow, which was beginning to fall heavily. Do you have the music? Where's my guitar? Wait, I forgot my gloves and earmuffs. I'm so nervous. It's a good thing you're not Maria. You'd faint. Me, me, me. I hope my voice is loud enough. I've never sung the devil before. It was the same every year. Sister Angie looked out of her window. Yes, she wiped away a tear as she saw Roberto's old pickup pull up outside. Lupe and Roberto got out and rang the doorbell. They wanted Sister Angie to see them in their costumes. Ah, Maria and Jose, you look wonderful. If I had my way, I'd offer you shelter right here. Now give me a kiss and be off. Roberto and Lupe were the last to leave the village. 
Roberto's pickup had been acting up lately, and the deep snow didn't help. A sudden skid, and the motor died. What to do? I'll walk ahead to see if I can get some help, Roberto told Lupe. Wrap up, and I'll be back before you know it. Down in the town, everyone had gathered. The snow had tapered off and was falling gently. The farolitos were lit. The plaza looked magical. Where are Lupe and Morberto? Father Vasquez asked. It's almost time to start. The guitars were tuned. The horn player had warmed up. The singers were ready. Even the devils were ready. But no Roberto and Lupe. And everyone knows that you can't have Las Posadas without Maria and Jose. Suddenly, down the street came a young couple. The man was leading a burro, carrying a young woman. We are friends of Sister Angie, the man said. Roberto and Lupe are stuck in the snow on the mountain road, so we have come to take their place. We know what to do, and we thought our burro could be in the procession too. My wife is going to have a baby, and it would be better for her to ride. Let's go then, Father Vasquez said gratefully. The candle-bearers led the way, followed by Maria and Jose. The musicians followed, and then came the singers. Out into the plaza they went. Everyone knew their part, even the burro. They stopped at the first door. Oh, let the holy couple in. Give them shelter. Let Maria rest so that the holy child can be born, they chanted. Jose knocked with his staff. Maria looked down from the burrow and smiled sweetly. But the devil appeared. No, no, don't let them in, he sang out. Look at them! How poor, how wretched! They have no money. The crowd booed and shouted. The procession moved on, knocking on one door after another. Sometimes the devil popped out at them, and the crowd booed even louder. Sometimes they knocked, and no one answered. It was one of the most beautiful Las Posadas ever held. Even the young woman playing Maria was about to be a mother just like the mother of the Holy Child. Perfect. They reached the gates to the courtyard. Once more they sang, asking to be let in. This time, no devil. The gates opened wide. The bonfire blazed and everyone rushed in. A little pushing and shoving, but that was all right. Everyone wanted to be near the manger. Well, you certainly saved Las Posadas, Father Vasquez said, turning to thank the young couple who had taken Lupe and Roberto's place. But they were nowhere to be seen. Maybe they didn't know that they were to sit in the special place near the empty manger. Father Vasquez, we are so sorry to be late. It was Lupe and Roberto calling out as they rushed into the courtyard. Did we ruin everything? No, no, Father Vasquez said. Sister Angie's friends were here. They led the procession, but now I can't find them. Go quickly and sit by the manger. What friends? Lupe whispered to Roberto. Sister Angie woke with a start. Las Posadas would be over. Everyone would be having their hot chocolate and cookies. The villagers would be back in an hour or two. I hope Lupe and Roberto did well, she thought. Sister Angie was feeling so much better. She looked out of the window. The snow had almost stopped. Drifts covered the rooftops and the street below. I'll just go over to the church and light a candle, she said to herself. She bundled up and put the key to the church in her pocket. Sister Angie crossed the street and stood in front of the church. Footprints in the snow on the steps led up to the door. She didn't think too much of it. Maybe some turistas. They came at all hours expecting the church to be open. 
Inside, the church was dark except for the candle burning in front of the Blessed Sacrament. "I'll light a candle in front of the carving," she said. She took an unlit candle and struck a match. The candle flared up and settled into a steady glow. Sister Angie knelt down and placed her candle in front of the carving. "O Maria, O Jose," she prayed, eyes closed. My heart will always be open to you so that the Holy Child will have a place to be born. Sister Angie opened her eyes. There in front of her she saw wet footprints leading to the carving. She looked up. The cloaks of Maria and Jose were covered in fresh snow.